In this lesson, we'll take a look at the CC Jaws effect, which allows us to create a zigzag pattern that's fully adjustable. So if you're following along, we're in folder five of the chapter two folder of the exercise files. And now with a new untitled project open, let's import the rusted metal JPEG file into the project panel. And then just like we've done earlier as a shortcut to create a composition, let's drag the JPEG file right into the composition panel. So now with our new composition created and our JPEG file showing up on the timeline panel, let's come over here to the effects and presets. Let's come in here and type in JAWS. Let's find the CC JAWS effect, which is under the transition group. Let's click and drag and drop this right on top of our JPEG file. Now, since this effect is actually part of a transition, there is a property in the effect controls called completion. So right now the default is zero. If we come over here and click and drag this and increase the percentage of completion, you'll see the results of this effect in the composition panel. So if I increase this up to 100%, that will increase the JAWS pattern so that we don't see it anymore. And then likewise, if I bring this down to a really low number, we can see the edges of the effect coming together in the center. Next, if we come down to the direction, we can control the direction of this effect by rotating this around. For the height, if I come in here, we can change the height of the teeth that are part of the jaws. We can also change the width. And all of this is fully dynamic. And so while you can certainly create the same effect in other applications, I would argue that the settings here inside of After Effects make something like this much faster, especially when we come over here to the effect controls and change the shape. So instead of spikes, we can come down here and click Robo Jaw. And again, all of these are fully dynamic, so I can come in and change the height and width of each one of these as well. And our background JPEG file will continue to be masked across all of these settings. So back over in the shape settings, let's change this to block. Again, we can change these settings in here as well. And then finally, let's change this to waves. So you can certainly continue to play with different settings to try to find an effect that you like. What I wanna do is go back to the metal teeth and I wanna create a graphic that we can use in a poster. So I'll come back up here to the center of the effect, click on reset, that will give me the spikes. So the first thing I'll do is come down to the completion. I'm gonna drag this up to about 47%. I'm gonna leave the center point right in the middle. I'll leave the direction at zero. Let's come down to the height. I'm gonna set this down to about 9%. Just type that in. I'll hit the tab key, that'll go down to the width. For the width, I'm gonna set this to four. And I'll tab away. That's gonna give me this nice zigzaggy pattern. And now to make this effect a little more believable, I'm gonna add a second effect here. Since I'm applying this zigzag effect to the rusted metal, I wanna change the edges of that effect. So I'm gonna go back to the effects and presets. Let's get rid of the word jaws inside of there. And I'm gonna type in the word roughen. I'm gonna look for roughen edges under the stylized group. And then I'll click and drag and apply this effect on top of the jaws effect on that JPEG file. And so now in my effect controls, I can see the roughen edges showing up down here. So under roughen edges, let's come in here and change the edge type from roughen down to rusty. I'm also gonna come over here and zoom up a little bit so we can see this. So I'll bring this up to about 25%. Can open my composition panel a little bit just so we can see what's happening. Back over in the effect controls, let's come down and change the border from eight to 20. So I'll type in 20 and hit tab. Next, I'll come down here to the scale. I'm gonna set this to 115, hit tab. And then for the evolution settings, let's come in here and change this to about 37 degrees. So I'll just click and drag this up. So that's gonna give me these rough edges across the CC Jaws effect on this JPEG file. Next, I'll come over here and set this down to fit so we can see everything. Now we can also see that the rough and edges is cutting into the outer edges as well. And I don't want this, I only want the edges on the inner teeth. So down here in the timeline panel, Let's select the rusted metal JPEG file. Let's toggle this open. Open up transform. Under scale, let's come in here with the lock set and let's change this to 103 and hit tab. So that will just increase the scale of the JPEG a little bit so we don't see the roughened edges on the outer edges. We only see it in here on the teeth. 
And now to add a little dimension and to be able to see that the CC JAWS effect is transparent, I'm going to come down here to the timeline panel. I'm going to toggle all the properties closed. Then let's come back to the project panel. Let's grab the rusted metal JPEG file again. Let's drag this on the composition again. So now we have two layers. Let's drag that second instance down below the JPEG file that has the effects applied to it. So now this is the background layer. I'm also going to make sure that my composition background is black. So let's go to the composition menu, down to composition settings. Make sure this is set to black. Let's click OK. In the timeline panel, let's grab the background JPEG file. Let's set the letter T key for opacity. And let's come in here and change this to 70%. That will make that background JPEG file a little bit darker than the JPEG file in the front with the JAWS effect applied to it. Next, let's select the JPEG file that has the effects applied to it. In the effect controls, let's toggle closed the CC JAWS and the roughen edges. Then let's go back to effects and presets. Let's come in here and look for drop shadow. So under perspective, let's grab the drop shadow. Let's make sure that we apply this to the top JPEG file. So now we have three effects on here. And let's come in here and change the opacity to 45%. Let's change the direction to 0 degrees. Let's change the distance to 100. And let's set the softness to 135. And then hit Tab. So now we have this nice drop shadow effect being applied to what looks like the bottom of the jaws, which in reality, it's being applied to the entire layer. So now let's come in here to the drop shadow listing in the effect controls, select this, hit command or control D to duplicate this. And then we'll come down here to direction and change this to 180 degrees, then hit tab. So now we'll get the effect of a drop shadow being applied to both the top set of teeth and the bottom set of teeth. And then finally, let's change the background JPEG to be reversed so that we don't see the patterns matching up. So let's come down to the timeline panel. We have the opacity still open here. So let's close the toggle and then open it again. And down here for scale, let's unclick the link, which locks the height and the width. Then let's come in here and change the first property to negative 100. Press return, and that will flip the background image so that the pattern doesn't match across the top and the bottom JPEG files. And then so at this point, I'm ready to save this back out to Photoshop so I can create my final project. So just like we've done before, we can go to the composition menu, come down to save frame as, and then choose Photoshop layers. And so this is the technique that I used to save out a Photoshop file that I could then add some copy to and then create a poster for a local art show.